Hello there everyone and welcome to the start of a new campaign in Old World Blues A to Z in which we're playing as a Choctaw Nation led by Nashoba Solomon. Oh boy. Cool. But we got smoke and fire and whatever the music. But when the bombs dropped we were prepared. A collective effort of all of our people brought together funding, scientific knowledge, engineering prowess, and spiritual guidance to keep us safe and we're underground while we're, the smoke and fire washed over the earth. Emerging from the earth once more. As the earliest ancestors emerged from the ground in the time of legends to claim his lands, so did we once more. Our forefathers grow the great war of the time of smoke and fire. We survived by being prepared. The smartest people in our community foresaw war coming and predicted it would be a quick and end in total devastation on both sides. We built shelters and mother mountains. Not quite vaults, but good enough to let us survive comfortably with enough good store to bridge the time we needed to spend underground. What do we have in abundance? Food? Entertainment? Weapons? We're gonna need that manpower. We're really gonna need that manpower eventually. Um, but I think I'm gonna go with stability. This one. Entertainment. That accord. Separate in land, but together in spirit. We wrote down everything we needed to guide our nations into the future. And then we'll figure out what we're gonna do next. Because I wanna make sure we do very well as uh, the Native American nation here. Choctaw. We knew we cannot stay forever underground, but the surface was too dangerous for a while directly after the bombs dropped. How long can we stay underground? Five years? I always choose 20 years because it's, it's this is best. It, you, you might as well go 20 years every single time, but. And then I always do this one too because this one gives you 150 political power if you get this one done first. Well, our nations have worked together for a long time now. Large scale cooperative projects were a rare thing. Maybe it's time to change that. Maybe it is. Because I do want to fade at the junction too, but. Efficient and protected construction allowed us to stay in contact with the other, other mother mounds while we were on the ground. As soon as we decided to come to the surface again, we contacted the other groups to come together to discuss how to proceed further. This ended in us signing the Accord of First People's Junction. What's the most important concept we wrote down? Safety? Freedom? Oh, that's not very much, but ooh, defense. We could probably use defense. Political power, 0 0.02. Honestly, you have 100 days. You have 1,000 days. You get 20. Hmm. What about safety? So, all this is nice and all, but. Your political power. Doesn't really matter too much. So, and we have the normal stuff over here. We can adjust the local situations. We have some libraries. Storage. Tellers and story keepers. Let's do this one because this is unique to us. It's been a tradition long before the war was passed on stories from one person to another to remember our history and our legends. These stories hold valuable lessons that made us the people we are today. Even if others are willing to repeat the mistakes from the past, we are, of course, not. So, that'll be good. As we get 1.12 political power every day, a little under 800 manpower, we get two people a month. Not good enough. But we do have a cup of coffee to keep us nice and satisfied. Or as satisfied as can be, of course. So we're going to do that one, but we have to get 200 political power. What can we do with it? Casino harvesters, more than just gambling. Ooh, this is political power, huh? This stuff is okay. Way of the land, that's not bad, that's okay. Uh, a librarian, I like that one, physical records. Legends of old, more stability, that's pretty good. That's not bad either. Storytellers, okay. Ooh, that's not terrible either. Uh, in the meantime, all sorts of different stuff here. Very cool. Brother Bomb, that's different. Um, anyone here? No, mad science. Ugh. The medicine man. Oh, spirit soldier lost minus twenty percent. That's pretty decent too. That's not bad. Uh, organization attack. I always like that one. Ooh, plus twenty percent description. You never know. I always like playing old world blues because you never know what the the devs are thinking about what they want to throw in in the game here. Just because like they they are updating it on occasion and it just makes it better overall. It shows the devs they still care. They do care. Ah, uh, stability. Why not? Cool. <clears throat> but we have keep it to knowledge, which is pretty cool. Starting planning skill level of new army leaders. Okay, acclimatization to the surface. Safety, of course. Support our people. And three nation trade center. So, but we do want to get down here as fast as we can. So, we need to complete everything on the right side of the focus tree. But we'll rebuild the library next. We need a secure place to store every piece of knowledge we've collected already, and we'll collect in the future. So we'll build a library, a place of learning and remembering. And we'll do this one too, addressing the local situation. I want to continue to prove we need to curry favor with or all of the major groups in our nation. With some options on accomplish this, of course. Scriptorium. It's not bad. Physical records. Books need special care to survive a large amount of time. It's a, it's a wonder. So many survive the ravages of war and the exposure to the elements of the following years. In this wing, they will be stored under optimal conditions to last as long as possible. So kind of our goal is to get down here, because eventually we can go to war with these guys and then core both the Desperados and Gator Maws. Which I think would be a really good goal for us, so. Scriptorium opening the library. The basement. ESP and U. The results are in. Pioneer Scout's Guide to Nuclear Fission. Ooh. The nuke. Use the nuke during wartime against the, cap uh, the capital of your enemy. Huh. Defenders of History. We also. Makato, 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 Achili. 
The stories that shaped our culture have been passed down from person to person over generations. People have added bits to them, changed parts, and adapted to the current situations, and we will now continue with this tradition. Living history, goal recruitment, old spirits for new world. Wow, 60 days for a single arms workshop, oh my god. That's not very good. I like this one though, that's pretty good. Um, schooling for everybody. Having unified federation-wide <clears throat> education. So this will not only help us uh, combat issues like poor literacy and untrained workforce, but also raise a new generation of bright minds that accelerate research projects. That's 12 days, why not? We'll get, it, get her done. Uh, visions of an unknown woman. <clears throat> I mean, we love women here. Totally. Uh, we received a report last night to under to see what they call a vision. After a rather unsuccessful hunt, they were prepared to head home when they heard out strange noises coming seemingly from everywhere at once. Looking for the source of that noise, they spotted a woman that suddenly appeared like an illuminated shadow a few dozen meters away from them. She was wearing loose robes and clearing a bottles of grain, and cautiously the hunters approached her. Before they could get too close, she only said the words come to me, pointing westwards. At this point, a map appeared next to her in thin air, looking similarly ethereal to her. Hunters said they were certain that it showed a location at the end of the Arkansas River. Then the woman disappeared again in a flash of light. The hunters ran back to the outpost as fast as they could to report what they saw. There was already a lot of discussion on what this vision means. The Choctaw storytellers of this event bears a striking resemblance to one of our ancient legends. The Cherokee Council. A scientist and engineer said the vision could be reasonably easily achievable, given the right technical know-how and resources. But all this means that someone went to Great Lakes to bring us this message. Too much effort for this to be a simple trap. Even to be somewhat of an undertaking to make the trip, chances are the result will be worthwhile, even just to satisfy our curiosity. Time to plan an expedition. Eventually. That's what we have to do that one in the expedition. The vision is brought on a flurry of activity. Fortune seekers, storytellers, and others are interested to see where this vision leads us. Take some time to prepare everything to be ready, but we will be ready in the end. Because we want to get down here, and then a homeless... The hunter and the alligator. We definitely want to go down that way, but I want to spend more time getting more stability. Or, uh, stability first, really. Yeah, I definitely want this guy. After this one, we'll definitely do, uh... Building the library and physical records. Um, opening the library, huh? The boon. Organized trade. So, um, goal immigrants or living history. We have an opportunity that very few people have a a had access to. Among us, walk some that have experienced more history than any other single man or woman before. People call them ghoul, but what they are to us is a living history filled with stories. Stories worth being told. Ghoul immigrants. Many societies in the West send meet ghouls with, with fear or hate. We, on the other hand, will welcome them with open arms. This place will be a safe haven for ghouls. Cool. I'll do the expedition stuff first. Before we do too much else. Uh, pretty much what we did. What else can I spend political power on? Ah, another division. Good. You know, these guys are only what? Uh, 18 combo. This is not too bad, actually. We can just go to war these guys early, maybe, and have them attack us, perhaps? They have no map power. Well, they have oh, crap, they division. So. Yeah, we can do it anyways. It's a little early, but whatever. Unreasonable demand. Acquire funding. During the vision of the unknown woman, we received coordinates for a place for a long way to the west. According to our maps, the easiest way to get in there is if we would travel along the Arkansas River to get a while to prepare. Oh, look at this. We got a ship. So we start training. The ship. Nice. Supply division is training, which is a good, 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 good. Keeps the political power for now. Building the library. Physical records, of course, too. And we can't do any of this up here, too, huh? No other original Great Plains Federation members are this focus yet. No. Okay. Are we tribals? I don't think we're tribals. No, we're not tribals. So, I'm not sure why that was there. But, whatever. Oh, I'm gonna go with conventional warfare. That would make sense for us. Even though it might be asymmetric warfare, it might be better, but I'm not using militia in this campaign. God, no. I hate militia so much. You know what? You're there. Why not? Ah. Clear out the raiders. An unpleasant fellow calling himself the Lord of the Pit and his gang and made their home in the Banner Pit. Over the years, they remained the former place of learning to a veritable fortress. A joint effort between our nations and militaries is necessary. Uh, I'd get asked him for that place. I like get horsemen down there, huh? Horsemen are nice. I like using horses. Launch expedition. Cities. Oh, we definitely need more guns and motorized vehicles, but what else do we need? We'll get some gliders, too. That'd be pretty good. Hope these guys don't go for the Desperados. We want them and we get a core of their territory eventually too. Which would be super good. Never enough money. Ah, terrible. I know. It's so terrible. Above that library. 
and cleared out the Raiders just to get it over with. Because these are really short and easy to do. Honestly, if you get this all done first, we could probably just do everything else first. Maybe. Actually, maybe we'll do that. Um, just because, as much as I want, I do want to get this guy fast though, opening the library, physical records. Um, to get this, to get us united first, would be just amazing. Because you need economic growth, reopen the pit, and the boon. Oh, so we need that one. We don't need either one of these. This one, that one, and economic growth. We might just beeline through this if we can, but at 60 days, that's a lot. And the other times I played as a chalk, the other nations, um, <clears throat> uh, I've already... I waited the last second to unify, but we'll see. A death decision. The Raider King hold up at the pit, transform the erstwhile place, alerting into the maze of traps. Coupled with them being heavily armed, this means we could take them out. We would not be able to do so without heavy losses, though. We could also try to reason with them, but that's not a guarantee to succeed either, because Raiders rarely listen to reason. Also, may lead them to being aware of our designs for, play, for the place and digging even deeper, but whatever we do. Everyone needs a pitch in, we need a group, of deci uh, group decision on how to progress from here. Send our troops. Send negotiators. Just send the negotiators, that's fine. Go on the archives. Why did the pit staff decide to store so much data on some punch cards? We get the feeling that the pit was seriously unfunded. I uh, couldn't even afford at least some consumer good raid holodisc machines. The punch cards would be on any attempt to salvage them, but the few holdouts or holodisks had, had luckily survived intact. We should distribute them among the federations so they can be used as efficiently as possible. Calm beginnings. First stretch of the journey has been rather calm so far. The weather is fine, we're making good time towards the goal on the Arkansas River, though that we barely let the federation lands, so this is to be expected. And even beyond that, the influence of the last patrol can still be felt. You know, they are not as powerful as they once were, but soon we will travel to mostly unknown territory, and who knows what will happen there. Onwards, and we'll send in the troops. <clears throat> Wait, what? Oh. Oh, crap. After a lot of back and forth discussion, it should be if we should send our troops or not, the decision was reached to expel the Raiders by force. Well, I guess we were wrong. <clears throat> Since it was a mis mission with a high chance of stepping on a mine or catching a bull with a volunteer call, is call started among troops of all three nations with the promise of double pay for anyone signing up. Despite the expected deadliness, a sizable number of soldiers signed up. If that was because of the sense of duty, recklessness, or greed, it's hard to tell. The actual battle was rather uneventful as the battles go. The first couple of unlucky soldiers stumbled into a few traps, but afterwards, people became more careful in their approach. It's not to say that no more lives were lost after that point, but slow and steady progress was made. The self proclaimed Lord of the Pit was waiting for us in a laboratory in the lower part, or lower floor. That was your purpose, and something akin to a throne room. He started a monologue about his destiny being the ruler of the Great Plains, one, when one of our soldiers ended that destiny early with a well aimed bullet to his head. The Lord amassed quite a decent amount of caps and other valuables in the throne room, and that may make this mission worthwhile above the inherent use of the pit. Also, the soldiers learned a couple of lessons on how to survive situations like this, either by their own actions or the misfortunes of those not returning. Clear. Nice. We got army XP, 200 bottle caps. Well, that was pretty good overall, actually. That was pretty decent. Um, sure, why not? We'll grab that one first. If we need to. I'm gonna give you some recon on here. I might make him 20 combo with actually instead. We'll see. Yeah, get more stability. Because I want to max the stability. Because you only you can do that option up until like 20%. Um, so, getting he heck out of dodge. Yeah, up to 80%. Once 80%, you can't take those options in the decisions tab anymore. So, that's why I want to maximize it as fast as possible. We know the column couldn't last forever. We were roughly a third of the way up to our goal. We encountered what we think are the ruins of Dodge City. Not only were we slowed down by ruins of buildings that have crashed into the river, we also noticed several corpses hanging from the few intact bridges we crossed under. That's why the guards are already on edge. People mentioning spotting movements uh, on the river shore that didn't make any better. That didn't happen for a while, uh, until a shot from the ruin took a head of the guard off the starboard side. The crew started to hunker down. Guards went in cover and exchanged fire with an enemy that they couldn't actually see. The captain put some strain on the engines to get out of the area as fast as we could. Faster, faster, faster. Now we have no consumer goods, but whatever. It is for a good cause. Green McCoy. Yeah, getting the extra put apart. I think that stability would be really nice too, but like I said, I want to focus on this stuff as much as possible first. Because if you do that and get more free stability later, it would be very nice. Forge a new path. The river clearly went some new or possibly old path in the years since the war. We came across a partially flooded village that has now snaked its way through. Local wildlife aren't particularly fond of us passing through it, but it didn't pose any real threat to us. Marlurks are hard to kill due to their thick shells, but their pistols could not pierce our ship's hull. The Marlurk kings were a different thing altogether, but they were scarce enough among the regular Marlurks that we could pick them off early. For their son could attack and harm anybody. Well, nobody was injured. We're happy to get past this area and more open waters again. It's roasted Marlurk tonight. I go low for this one. Honestly, I'm going to go 20 combo with. Screw it. I like, I like thick infantry. Nice 50%. He's going to learn a lot very quickly. Especially when we go to war. Oh, we need some anti tank. We're going to get anti tank next. Ah, we're stocking. 
Spotted some untouched looking buildings uh, on our port side, including a supermarket and a hardware store. We started to stop and look if we could find some useful supplies in it. And we, then we found some. We also found what oh, were a couple of dead bodies were instead of massive feral ghouls in the rusting state. The notice our shopping trip woke him up and began to shamble towards us. We tried, but decided to hastily retreat with way less loot than we planned on getting out of the market. Better hungry than dead. Nice. Come the archives. Reopen the pit. With a great celebration, the plans Commonwealth Institute of Technology was reopened to the public today. The leaders of the Allied Nations were all in attendance and applaud to applaud this great leap forward for the Federation. The first batch of new students were already uh, waiting in front of the gates, ready to begin learning. The features within a grasp. Nice. The audience. We finally arrived at what I uh, thought was our destination. We were greeted by a group of travelers seeming to have expected us, surprisingly enough, accompanied by a Mr. Handy Robot. They accompanied us to a grand hall that was a giant woman. She was resting on something obscured by smoke and strange lights, but it was clear that if she would stand up, she would tower over many a building. She was definitely the woman that our hunters saw that night. Some of the scientifically minded people in our group quickly pointed out the projectors placed in the corners of the room. We could assume that the vision was we received was in a similar vein, though it was not quite clear where the origin of the projection was from during the event. The talk with the goddess Diana, as the tribe was called her, was de pleasant, but we could not shake the feeling she was expected to us to be more deferring and awed by our presence than we were. But we were impressed by the reason she brought us here. Horses. Honest god horses. Pretty sure there weren't any horses anymore, any more around. She basically confirmed the suspicion by saying that these horses were specifically produced to survive in the wasteland by some machines hidden away in a secret place. And they were a gift to us. We had to quickly figure out the logistics of putting them on our boats and somehow keeping them safe on the track back, long trek back home. Also, some doubts became loud among crew and expedition members about why she would give to something like this. Or motives. We're not sure, and I hope you won't ask for a favor in return at some point. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. The boom. Expedition was hard, and now without its loss, but we prevailed and brought home something with us that has not been seen for almost 200 years. Horses. Living and breathing horses, bred specifically, to survive in this harsh environment. Long before the war, people adapted so quickly to, be, to them to be renowned for their skill with horses. We'll do so again. Yeah, the faster we can add, the better, probably, honestly. I want to be able to do this at least one more time. Um, oh, we need less than 7%. Oh, that's different. Less than 7%. Well, crap. Bro. Well, whatever then. Thanks for 84% is even better. One and a half of a day is not bad. Because we need to collect as much political power so we can start coring stuff too. Once we conquer stuff, of course. Free trade between members. We made great uh, steps in the right direction with a new approach to trade. Now we need to step, stop individual settlements taxing traders for protection, Oft, often rather forcefully. Infrastructure based projects. Um, with an ever increasing influx of people and goods, we need to upgrade our transport networks. Path, roads, strange. Everything we need is decent fixing. And a new coat of paint. Little Brother to War. Oh. We should consider reviving the old sports ball called Stickball. Or old sport. It's often used to just settle disputes between tribes and get the young warriors ready for battle. Both of these things um, sound incredibly useful. Add it, add it to the entertainment value and uh, regular inter federation matches become a good, very good idea. Honestly, we do this first. Like That means the forces of the other nations are focused on stuff like this, potentially. So, that might be good overall. Avengers of Liberty, huh? Nice. I'm going to get another arms workshop. We have to really start making some anti tank. But we ain't quite there yet. Ooh, look at this. Yes. Nice. More daily arm XP game. Experience game uh, percentage modifier. Good. Good. More, 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 please. Oh, uh, what do we have here? Local workspaces? That's pretty good. Do it again? Okay, why not? Nice. Very good. Very, very, very good. It's got kids. We're gonna use horses, so I'm not con super concerned about using that, so. The boon. So instead of doing that one, we're gonna go and do this one first, just because it gives us other armed workshop, so. That are we gonna do? Oh, horses. This one first. Alright, what else do we have here? Eh, I saw some manual prospectors, because why not? Some ship stuff, very good. And what do we want? Cheap arms. Honestly, we could use more arms. We only have 29, but. Yeah. Infrastructure wouldn't be bad. It does give you tool procurement research speed. 5% is okay. It's not great. Monthly population is not bad. Can't even make any of the sport equipment anyways, though, for that one. Demo equipment. That's different. Wow, minus 20% defense. But more soft attack and production costs. Jesus. 
This is not bad, actually. More break than reliability, because everyone uses it. Ooh, but more soft attack. Should we have more soft attack or break than reliability? 10% is not much. I'll just go lock and load. Why not? Seems pretty good. Yeah, we just need that stuff out fast. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure which one we want to do yet. We'll see in a little bit, but... Of course, clear out the river beds of fauna. There are many rivers crossing our nations, and they play a significant part in our nation's economy and infrastructure. But large swaths of them are still plagued by the Marlurks and other critters. We need to get rid of them to make work and travel safe for everybody. Train the outsiders. No. Before one of the advantages of horses is the speed of rough terrain without using up limited fuel reserves we have left, we should invest in a shared recon reconnaissance force using horses that uses this to our advantage. Protect the caravans. Major business costs, reopen stuff. Yeah, that won't be bad. Restore the highways. The many highway crisscrossing our nations. They're often the most direct paths <clears throat> between cities and minor settlements. Where they're passable, that is. We need to check their state of disrepair and send workforces to the worst affected parts of them. So we could go to war with them, but we don't have anti tank yet. Huh. If we do go to war, we want to save up and get a well equipped army potentially, too. Potentially? Potentially. It's only 12 days. So when does this expire? 29th of March. Alright, so if that's the case, go ahead and do this too. Because you might got you. Oh no! They're taking it over! God dang it! You get down there just too late. Man, I wanted to go to war with them too. Because if we go to war with them, then they'll, they'll want to go to war with us. And there's, I don't think there's any way we can really fight these guys. It might just be best to wait, unite our nation, and then kill these guys off, and then go to war with those. God dang it. Yeah, I think it'd just be best to wait. Ugh. I knew they'd fight them eventually. Bro. Problem with this nation. Be using another research slot too. So that's probably going to be the goal then. Race through all this, unite us together, and get down to the fate of Sequoia. Restore the highways, of course. Reopen train stations. The train network is laying idle since the war. While occasional opportunists and experience claim a train station has its domicile, no work has gone actually in getting the trains and tracks into working condition again. But especially in places where Brahman caravans are at capacity, at, uh, at capacity of freight train will both help with the amount of goods and time it takes to deliver them. This is a significant undertaking, but well worth it. Contact lost cutting in. While repairing the highways is well and good, not every settlement is conveniently placed along the arteries. A lot of smaller communities are often situated off the beaten track. Um, we need to make sure these people don't fall through the grid by having clear, well protected roads so that, to them so that traders can reach them and supply them with whatever they may need. Or it's being programmed. The stock we brought with us from Diana won't last forever. We need. Uh, I think long term, of course. And we want to keep using horses down, years down the line. Well, the need for a dedicated breeding program is clear. The specifics are up for discussion is how much of the current stock we dedicate to it. The more horses are bound up in breeding programs, the less we have for current needs. Large scale. Large scale. It's fine. And of course, we found them. Of course, because why wouldn't we? Passenger trains. Surprising byproduct of our, our stored, uh, restarted uh, train network is the increasing demand of people wanting to travel with them. But our trains really have no room to host any significant amount of per passengers. A big saddle of wagons full of grain is not a good place to travel. The solution is simple. Dedicated passenger trains that drive on a fixed schedule. That also cuts someone into our freight uh, capacity, but it's been the benefit of being able to send people where they are needed quickly. Protect the caravans. Our approach of stopping the often protection racket like ways of certain sediments towards saddlers, traderly, or traders, sadly, led to a decrease in protection for caravans overall. We need to step in ourselves. Regular patrols along major uh, trader routes into trade hubs will show that the caravans are not easy pickings for the common raider. Attract foreign caravan companies. So that's what we have. The local side of this trading business figured out fairly well. We might as well look outwards and see what other people are doing. Uh, and maybe get one of the two caravan companies interested in setting up a shop inside our borders. I can have growth, of course, too. First People Junction is a place to buy and sell all kinds of things. Investing in this growth as a trade bubble will benefit all members of the Federation. Of course, planned horse breeders. Well, the initial stock of horses were good. It won't be enough to assess whether the needs of our troops in the long run. We need to organize the system to breed them efficiently or we'll run out of them sooner or later. But we were taking care of that. Now, I'm also particularly care events next. Why not? The first full scale uh, sick ball match took a while to get going. There are various versions of the rules that are half remembered by the participants. <clears throat> 
uh, and judges, and then nobody else could agree on a single one. So I wanted to go with a lacrosse rule set, since I had the most confidence in the rule set of all variations to survive the war. I also wanted to go back to more traditional versions of what kept passed down through the generations. And they had a weird mix of multiple rule sets was adopted as the new official stickball rules. The game lasted a good four hours and ended with a brawl because one team didn't agree with the final score. All in all, though, I would agree that they had a good time and should be repeating it as soon as possible. More training? Line doctor? Maybe all the strategies translate to actual war? We'll probably go with that one. Attract foreign caravan companies. <coughs> Excuse me. We sent messages far and wide and tasked as many promising foreign caravan companies as we can to put down roads or routes, at least in outposts in our lands. Promises were made to subsidize them for some time or give them exclusive rights to whatever market they're trying to corner. First batch of answers arrive, we pick whoever we think will give us the most benefit. Crimson Caravan, which I always choose. Diamond shipping. Something we don't ever really need. Ozark Lodge. Support equipment. Where the big sellers sell the quality wood they get from what remains of the nearby national park, they have branched out into other goods as well, like unique plants with deep special properties that grow in the wilderness. Let's go with that one. I always choose caravan companies, but whatever. Uh, right now, though, <clears throat> we're finishing up economic growth. So we finished up this part of the tree, which is very nice. So, you know, first People's Junction is a place to buy and sell all kinds of things. Investing in its growth as a trade-off will benefit all members of the, uh, the Trade Federation. And fate of the Federation. Our nations have grown closer and closer in recent times, and we've danced around a particular topic for a while now. Should we jump over our own shadows and become one nation of one people? While well, we make a sports to be reckoned with in the area, there are not only upsides to it. Even with our already close co cooperation, it'll still be a while before any new nation will run as effective as individual ones. And some might argue that some things that make our people unique will get lost in the shuffle. <coughs> And sometimes that's a good thing. <clears throat> one nation, huh? The decisions we made, we are one nation, one people, will be strong, we'll prevail, and we'll look forward in the future, which is good too. Scriptorium. Not every place wisdom comes from the time before the war, there is much to be learned in the intervening wars and or intervening years, and yet more stories to be told in the future. We'll record them on paper or tape so that future generations can learn from them. I'll tip our cousin, you know, this is asymmetric warfare, we're whatever, I don't care. While some people prefer the tactile feeling of books made of actual paper, the practicality of holotapes and terminals is not to be underestimated. The wings of the library will be dedicated to the archive of every holotip that we own, the technology read and write them. Should be good. Um, so if that's the case, uh, follow to the apocalypse. It's usually better to let them just not come in here, but you know what? We'll let them in. Screw it this time. Make it a little different. Placate them. Your bonus, but we lose stability. I don't lose any stability. Escort them. Whatever. So, if we unite, how long does it take for us to go to war with the last patrol or even Scrapper's Compact? Oh, we can't. Okay, then. If we can go to war with these guys, how long will it take? We might be able to unify before then, because where are we out? Because we have 16 days left for this one. 16 and 76-ish days, get that one done, and then start doing One Nation will be good too. New capital? It isn't really necessary to move the seat of our government to a new location, but you can't underestimate the symbolic value. Of having the center of our newly formed nation, where many decades ago we signed the document that led us to this point. We've seen improve some infrastructure and amenities in the area, though. Gateway to the Plains Commonwealth? Well, we'll probably do a new ruling body instead. There are many different groups in the various governments before we emerge, and in addition to that, while they may not lead the nation anymore, the skill and expertise of other nations, or the other two previous leaders, is invaluable to uh, our newly formed nation. So let's do the thing of the Federation. So let's at least become the Federation first. We have no one for military staff, do we? Oh, we play some Survivor, which is okay. Traditional values. Oh, Raider Tactics. That's definitely better. But we can't get him, unfortunately, so. Oh, yeah, it really sucks. Let me see, sell stuff. We can do more plane stuff, maybe. Of course, industry would be good too, but coming down here would be even better. Nice. Because we're doing okay. As a small minor nation like us, we're just doing okay, not great. Oh. Oh, okay, that's fine. Anything else here? War propaganda? We can. Weekly war sports is decent. You know, we'll also grab that. Here's our sufficiency game is pretty good, too. Military academy training would be nice. Last patrol. Maybe we could take these guys out first and take out, uh, basically Texas. Basically. So. Hey, we'll see you in a little bit, though. Nashoba Solomon. Pretty good. And then we get all the other ter uh, units too, which would be super nice. Occupied okay, territories can't do much about that. People are doing okay. Um, and we're really going to save this one for Medicine Man. I think it'd be best to do Medicine Man. Yeah. That's a lot of recovery, which is really nice. Yeah, look, made another division. Awesome. Because we have these divisions here still, which is fine. I just wish we get some daily army XP. That'd be nice. Riders. Can't make them though because our special forces is too low. You're already doing the NCR, which is fine. And we're working on a. Well, we could become a spy, spy master, but we're going to annex 
guys. Anyway, so that'd be a waste of 50 political power, which would kind of suck. And establish themselves, whatever. We lose some political power, god dang it, but whatever. You know what? Screw it. What are we doing, anyways? Oh, there's that one, too. Nice. And the big question, my friends, is the big old question. Should we unite? Should we not unite? Of course we should unite. Why wouldn't we want to unite? Makes no sense to not want to. And we don't want to deal with all that stuff down there. Nations grow closer and closer in recent times. We've danced around a particular topic for a while now. Should we jump over our own shadows and become one nation, one people? Well, it would make us a force to be reckoned with in the area. There are not only upsides to it. Oh, I think that's four. Yeah. Would we vote? Nay. Yay. We just instantly eat them up. Yay. Ben freaking test. We're a big old green nation, but I'm probably going to do a lot of the stuff off screen. Um, we're going to do one nation. We're going to do several of these and go to war. This graphics gone back, right? Or last patrol. One of those two. Regardless. If you enjoyed the video, don't leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, I'll see what we can do with the Sequoia Nation and Choctaw Nation, of course, as we push to reclaim lots of Oklahoma, as well as part of Louisiana. Thanks for watching, have a great, great rest of your day!